<laughs> Let me give me at her. Hey everybody, how you doing? Mark here with Missy, who is just craving attention all of a sudden. <laughs> but what I want to talk about today is a new helmet that I got. As you can see, it got everything right laid out right here. And I recorded the video of going down to Galena, Illinois um, a couple of weeks ago. And this arrived in the mail just a couple days ago. I purchased this no more than a month ago and it's already showed up. I couldn't believe it arrived that quick. <laughs> Are you okay? Do you need to go outside? You wanna go back outside? All right. All right, all right, let's go back outside then. <laughs> that dog sometimes. <laughs> okay, but uh, in the box came, of course, the helmet and it came with its own, uh, what do I do with it? It came with its own little storage bag, dust bag, whatever you want to call it. And it also comes with a, um, drop down visor, but the reason why I got mine so cheap is because the mechanism that holds the shade or sunscreen, shade screen, whatever you want to call it, is broken. So that's why I was able to get such a good deal on this. Now this helmet is an LS2 helmet. It is their OF569 track helmet. And this helmet's been out for years and it was recently discontinued. And it was, it was really hard to find this particular one. And it was primarily because the stock is just doing the way. Um, they've updated a few things to the helmets that replaced this. Um, one of the things that they changed was down here, they actually cut little vent holes along the bottom edge down here. Um, another model had the same vent holes, but then it had a little slider to where you can open and close those vents. And then they had also had a bunch of vents in the back. You know, I guess it was just to really help airflow. But, I mean, as you can see too, I've already been playing with my helmet. I got my action cam mounted on here. I did it the same way that I did my old helmet. I used uh, Sculpey Clay um, 3 and just kind of molded it and shaped it and put it on there. I tried to make it a little bit thinner this time so that the uh, camera didn't stick out so far. Got my microphone ran through. I got to do a few things to kind of help tidy it up and try to keep it pinned in one spot so it's not sliding in and out like that. <laughs> Which actually, it's not a bad thing that it does that. But anyway, one of the features that I do like about this helmet is this little handy dandy ratchet strap for your, for your chin strap. Just nice and easy, just yeah, just slides right in, pull the little um, red thing here and it just pops right out. This right here is an extension of the padding that comes down and you do that around your chin. That way when you go to put your rats, ratchet strap in, it doesn't accidentally pinch. So yeah, that's just kind of a really nice feature right there. Um, the visor has um, basically full up, two detents, and then fully down. So this is fully up. You get one, two, and then fully down. I like that a lot. And what I've noticed too is that when it gets to the fully down stage, these sides kind of get pulled in just a little bit. And yeah, it should make it a nice snug fit around my head. Oh, and by the way, it came with these uh, reflector stickers and 
they tell you how you should put it on the helmet. Well, screw it. I just made a nice little happy face. <laughs> um, the um, Keep on talking about the visor here. It's got a nice, easy release mechanism. There's a little uh, toggle switch. You just pull it to the O. There's an O and a C. You put it on O, you twist it downwards. So you put it on O, you twist it downwards, and the whole thing just comes right off, and then the visor itself will come off, and then you do the same thing to the other side. And then you make sure that you put it back on close, that way it doesn't pop open again. Yeah, that one's on close. This model has two front air vents and I really don't know how much air this is actually going to flow but I mean it should be decent so you got two intakes here and then you got the exhaust back here I tell you what let's put it on I have had this on because I put on the the camera and I will tell you right now it is very snug Even, even though I've got glasses, you know, it fits over there pretty well. I can feel the pressure on my ears pushing back, hitting the uh, bow of my glasses around my ear. So I kind of play with it just a little bit, move things around until I can finally, uh, I get it in an area where it's nice and comfortable, okay? So just like that. And again, the strapping, you put that around your chin, just like that. And then you take your, your ratchets and just put it on and that's it. I mean, it's nice and snug. It's just like, wow. And then you just get the little tab, pull it, it's undone. You undo the little piece of Velcro there, you take it off. It's just really, really nice. The ratchet just goes in so easily. It's yeah, it's just that nice. Now, of course, the face shield. This is one of the things that I love about this helmet. And it was, uh, it was one of those things that when I saw it, and I saw the diameter of the eye outlet here. When I have my face shield down, I can pretty much see almost nothing of the helmet. When I put it on, I cannot see down here. It is so close to my face that I cannot see the bottom of the visor. I can see from here to here. Yep, right there. So I can see that little bit right there. And when it comes to the sides, I cannot see them at all when I'm facing forward, okay? It's when I turn my eyes, I can finally see the edge you know, but it's out of my peripheral, you know, it, when I look this way, I can see my computer desk and, and stuff over there. This is just in the very peripheral of me looking to the side. I mean, it is wide open. So I think that should be really, really quite nice to be able to drive and have nothing to catch your eye as you're driving. You're just seeing the open road. I, I gotta still get used to this ratchet because I keep on wanting to reach up and do my clip. <laughs> the uh, liners, the cheek and the, and the main headliner are all removable so they can be removed and taken out and washed. I'll do a video sometime on how to actually wash your helmet liners. But yeah, I think this is gonna be a helmet that I can live with for a little while. It is snugger than I am used to. My old helmet, I think I bought it a size too big. And so it was kind of loose when I first originally purchased it. And then over the time, the um, cheek pads and everything started to break down a little bit. And in the past maybe year or two has gotten real sloppy. And that when I'm riding, um, wind coming off of my windscreen coming up and over hits me in the head and it actually moves the helmet around 
but it's so loose that it just moves the helmet. My head doesn't move with it. And I think this is gonna be tight enough to where if my head is getting moved by buffeting wind, it's gonna be my whole head. It's not gonna be just the helmet going around and just beating the sides of my head together. I do like this because it is meant for an intermediate oval shaped head, which I have, most people do. That uh, IS-33 that I had was more for a round shaped head. So after maybe an hour of riding, simply an hour, I would end up with a red mark going across my forehead. And yeah, it just kind of made it uncomfortable. But, you know, the new, uh, new helmet, I can't wait to try it out. I made all these modifications during the course of the day on getting the, um, the camera case put in, putting in the microphone, getting things all ready to go. I am going to go out for a test ride tomorrow. I'll take you guys with me and we'll see exactly how well the hel helmet performs. One of the things that I'm most concerned about is wind noise. That is the one thing. People say that the noise level is pretty decent, but for such a cheap helmet, I paid less than $100 for this helmet, including the shipping, okay? <laughs> but again, I got it at a very good discount because that sunshade visor was broken and I just cannot fix it. I don't know how to fix it. There was a little piece that came out and yeah, that's just the way it's gonna be. I'm basically gonna to try to learn how to ride without having to rely on sunshades. And in fact, I was thinking about on my next eye appointment, I might get transition lenses. So when I go outside, they'll darken up and when I'm inside, they'll lighten up. So, so that's the first looks on this LS2, a couple of the little features that it has and what I, one of the things that I liked about the um, sun visor, and like I said, this one doesn't work, but the uh, toggle is down here by your chin where the uh, IS-33 had it up here and it was all spring loaded and stuff. And my spring on my helmet was actually getting worn out to where when I pushed the release button on the top, the visor would pop up, but it wouldn't go up all the way. And I would actually have to take my hand and slide the little slider back in order to get that last uh, half inch or so up into the helmet. But now I don't have to worry about it because this one has the broken visor. Um, the liners of the pads are antimicrobial, so that will help with getting stink and stuff like that. Um, you know, kind of getting that stuff to dissipate so you don't go, whoa, <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, gee, I'm, I'm just really excited to try this helmet and see how it goes. But it's just gotten too dark outside and we can't do it now. I mean, I could, but you wouldn't see much of anything. All right, so I'll see you guys in the morning. We'll go for a little ride and test out this helmet. And uh, yeah, I, everything in my mind of how this helmet should operate, I think is gonna do very well. You know, like I said, the only thing I'm most concerned about is the wind noise and if I can withstand the tightness of the helmet. Those are really my two biggest con concerns. Okay, well, we'll see you guys in the morning. Okay, guys, it is the next morning. I stopped off and got some gas in my tank, so I got a nice full tank now. And I've been tooling around Beloit just at the 25 and 35 mile an hour speed areas. And so far so good. I like that I can uh, crack the visor open a little bit and I'll allow a little more airflow to come in. I do like that quite a bit. And then uh, I'm also really starting to like the, the chin strap. Nice and easy to do. Easy to do with the gloves on. And then of course you just gotta pull the little, you know, even with my gloves on, I can find this little 
red strap and pull that to undo it. And I also like that I don't have that dangly bit of strap that I've got to put up and snap into place. So it's just zip the, uh, the ratchet in and that's it. That's all I got to do. So I'm kind of curious on how the wind is going to affect. I've gotten up to 45 miles an hour. I don't know how the wind is going to affect the microphone with the face shield just popped a little bit. So I'll close that now and uh, that way we can tell if there was a difference in the wind noise or not. I still have to do a little bit of modification to the microphone um, just because the uh, it wants to slide back and forth. I need to do a little bit of stitching in order to get it locked down into a position and then have it stay there. But right now, you know, just doing up to the 45 mile an hour, the sound has not been too bad. You know, that was one of my main concerns was the noise, you know, all the wind noise going around the helmet. You know, that was one of my main concerns. 45, yeah, that wasn't too bad. Um, as soon as I get through the stop plate here, we'll get up to 55 mile an hour. And then I'll jump onto 11, head over to the interstate. And, and then we'll get the bike up to 70 miles an hour and check it out there and see how the wind noise does out on the interstate. So even at 55 miles an hour, I seem to be getting a lot of noise. And I'm not sure exactly where it'd be coming from. I think it's just the turbulence of the wind going by the helmet. I mean, at 55, it's not too bad. I have the vents completely open. So I'm getting as much airflow through the helmet as possible and it does feel just a little warm but again I don't think it's anything dire that's you know a huge negative. Look to my left, look to my right. Well that was actually really nice. I can turn my head easily and the helmet still keeps a really good aerodynamic cut through the wind. You know, I turn my head and it's, I don't feel the wind pulling my helmet or my head. So that's really nice. I like that a lot. I'm just loving the huge um, view cut out I cannot see my helmet when I'm looking straight ahead I can't see I cannot see the bottom of the of the face shield at all gosh it's really nice it almost feels like I do not have a helmet on my head <laughs> it's really really good I am curious. Let's see if this does anything to the wind, the wind noise. Doing 55 mile an hour with the face shield cracked to its first E10. I know that there's a change in my voice and that I can't hear it nearly as well. And all the while going 55 mile an hour, I cannot get any buffeting off of my windscreen. With my old helmet, it was so loose that the buffeting wind coming up off the windscreen, hitting me in the, in the helmet, would shake my whole helmet around. And I am not getting that. So that's really nice. I mean, there were times where I'd be up on an interstate for an entire day on doing some of my longer trips. And I have such a headache 
because my helmet's moving around all the time. I am just not getting that at all. And being that the fit is nice and tight, my glasses also are not moving around either. Again, with my older helmet, it was so loose that when it was moving, my glasses would move with the helmet. That's kind of a weird thing to have when you have bifocals. <laughs> At 55 miles an hour, the wind's not too bad. I'm, I'm hoping that my microphone's not picking it up too much. But yeah, if it's if it's actually this loud going 55, I'm really concerned about what it's going to be like going 70. Like I said, right now at 55 miles an hour, that's actually kind of loud. I would say that's louder than my uh, IS-33 helmet that I had. But I mean, that's also something that's easily correctable. You know, I can just put in earplugs. So, I guess the wind really isn't that big of an issue. And I really thought that the tightness of the helmet was going to be an issue, but I'm actually finding I'm liking it that way. Okay, I am doing 70 miles an hour. And yeah, there's some, uh, there's some good uh, wind noise going on. I was to drive at 70 all day long, my ears would definitely be ringing by the end of the day. But again, I can easily put in earplugs, you know, just listen to some music or something like that. The buffeting that's coming off the windshield is hitting my helmet, I can feel that a little bit. The helmet does shake a little, but not nearly as much as my other helmet. <laughs> I'll tell you though, I do miss not having that sun visor. I really wish I could just reach up here and throw my little toggle switch and drop it down. Just can't do it. Mine's broken. So let's see, turn left, look right, and you know what? The helmet still sliced through the air really well. It is not pulling my neck, it is not twisting in any way. I don't feel like the helmet is trying to lift up and off of me. You know, the tension on the strap down here is just consistent all the time. So yeah, I think this is a good real world experience. <laughs> I am so impressed with the iPort. I just cannot see my helmet. Yeah, I can see the outside edge of my glasses. But yeah, unless I really move my eyes and look off to the side or look up, even if I look down, I cannot see the bottom of the face guard or face shield. Oh, and I forgot to tell you guys one thing about this helmet too. It is, it is of course DOT rated, but it's also ECE rated. So this is actually rated higher than the standard DOT. And that's actually really hard to find in an open face uh, helmet like this. I mean, there's a few out there, but not many. Okay guys, well, I'm going to, I think I'm going to end the video here. Hoping you guys can hear me okay.
But I'm going to end the video here, and I'll see you at the house, and uh, we'll just kind of go over what I thought of the helmet after this quick little 20 minute ride. Well, 30 minute ride. Alright, see you guys back at the house. So, my final thoughts on the helmet. Overall, I do like it. It's probably not the greatest helmet that I've had, and not that I've had very many, but I think this will work out just fine. I like the snugness that it gives around my whole face, even on the cheeks, especially when I drop down the face shield. It just kind of pulls the sides in just a little tighter. It's really cool. I like that. Um, one thing I was noticing though, um, and it was actually after I turned the camera off on my way home, I started to get a, a, a spot across the top of my head right up front here that was really starting to hurt. And when I was looking at it, I pulled out the, the lining here and there's a seam to go from this front panel to the panel of padding that goes across the top. And that seam is actually quite hard. <laughs> Got a woodpecker up there. Yeah, it just was really hard across the top of my head and it really started to hurt. So I may have to start thinking of something I can do to uh, pad that just a little bit. Maybe just take a little piece of foam and just put it in there myself just to give a little bit of something. So yeah, that was really the only issue I had. Um, it did ride a little warm, I thought, um, which would explain why they went with a um, heavier duty ventilation system, why, they're, why the newer models have vents cut across the, the front of the visor and other ones have big, huge multi vents going down the back. You know, that kind of makes sense now because I was getting a little warm when I was riding the, with this on. Um, wasn't so bad at the higher speeds, but uh, doing like 55 mile an hour and you keeping the face shield all the way down, you know, it started getting a little warm in there. But uh, again, it's not horrible. Um, another issue that I had also as I was coming home, I didn't even try it when I was uh, first recording and that when I was doing about 35 mile an hour, I had the face shield completely up. And at 35 mile an hour, this kind of vibrates and, and wiggles a little bit. But that was really the only issue I had. Um, I'm really liking the chin guard or the chin strap. I really am. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's a good helmet. It really is. So yeah, guys, I think this is going to be a very doable um, helmet. Uh, I really am liking it quite a bit. Well, this is Mark saying thanks again for watching, guys. Thanks for watching this review on the LS2 OF569 track helmet. <laughs> oh man, what a name. And yeah, I think this is going to be a very... A very good helmet I really do I just got to figure out that one crease part right here in the uh, in the helmet padding try to figure out how I can get that to be a little bit better for my head all right this is Mark saying thanks again for watching guys I'll see you on the road bye